So Fox host Mark Levin um, and a bunch of conservatives are turning on Trump over the economic response to COVID-19, but they're doing it for all the wrong reasons. So in other words, it's not like they're not targeting the corporate bailout portion of the bill that I talk about, which is terrible. It's just to give away to corporations and they're going to go bankrupt soon enough anyway, because you bail out the cruise line industry and the airline industry. And nobody goes on. Nobody, you know, uses them over the next year and a half, two years, and then they're going to need another bailout. So but he's not. Point is, he's not criticizing in a reasonable way. You'll see the nature of his criticism here. And it's pathetic. Now, this next round of spending is a disaster. You can't push this kind of money into an economy and then say that we're going to put people to work when you're telling people not to work. That is the federal budget. $4.7 trillion. That is what they just spent last week. $2.2 trillion. That is what the Fed can loan. $4.5 trillion. And basically, they've nationalized the private capital market. Now, they want to spend another $2 trillion. Believe me, with the Democrats, it's going to get worse than that. What's a trillion dollars? A trillion dollars. Does anybody know? Right now, that's $13.4 trillion. I have to put it in writing. It's so big. That's 11 zeros. Okay, $13.4 trillion. What is a trillion dollars? One trillion dollars is a million millions. One trillion dollars is a thousand billions. Washington, stop. You're going to destroy the economy, what's left of it. You're going to create massive inflation. If you're right, if you're right and I'm wrong, then we'll have Venezuela. Oh, my God. He's so stupid. Okay. So the Venezuela point. Um, first of all, we don't have sanctions that are absolutely positively crushing our economy. We have just unbelievably um, restrictive sanctions on Venezuela. So that hurts them up front. But beyond that, they put all their eggs in the oil basket. Okay, they don't have an economy that's diversified in any way, shape, or form. All their eggs were in the oil basket. And so when uh, the price of oil the price of oil fluctuates, and when it does, I mean, forget it. You, you totally obliterate that economy. So to make the comparison, us to Venezuela, is beyond absurd. It's just beyond absurd. So that's your argument by having, by doing stimulus spending... We're going to become Venezuela. Okay, every single government, when you have an economic downturn, they do stimulus spending. Why? Because if the government does not do stimulus spending, you exacerbate the financial crisis. The government is the last line of defense, the spender of last resort, and um, they have the ability to basically prop up the economy. So now, having said that, Yes, there are ways in which you should do that and ways in which you shouldn't do that. You guys know I'm against the quantitative easing for the financial institutions. I'm against the bailouts for the big corporations, or at the very least, the bailouts with fewer, no strings attached. So yes, there's plenty to criticize in the way that we're handling this. But that's not Mark Levin's criticism. Mark Levin's criticism is, Man, I have a sheet that has big numbers on it. Here, watch. Look, I got large numbers. See? Look. See, that's a big number. I don't know how well you guys could see that. See, there's a lot of zeros there. I'm Mark Levin, which, and I somehow have the same voice as Ted Cruz. Me. <laughs> he really is the most annoying in terms of the sound of his voice, too, though, uh, among the conservative commentators. Ted is the worst among the politicians. But, like, his whole argument, and I've, I remember from when I started in, uh, you know, following politics, conservatives have always used this argument. Back, you know, back in the day when the national debt was like 16 trillion, they'd be like, and did you know the national debt is 16 trillion? And then, like, do you, do you have a point? Because they don't, they never put it in context. They never explain what that means. And like Mark Levin either doesn't know or doesn't care that we control our own currency. And when you have a sovereign currency, you kind of can do whatever you want. The only thing that would prevent you from, you know, continuing to pump liquidity into the marketplace is um, inflation. And we're not experiencing a lot of inflation right now. 
So the move from the Federal Reserve is we're going to do everything that we can until we, you know, come up against that barrier, in which case then we back off a little bit. Because as you guys know, I've floated my idea before that all the industries that are asking for a bailout, it's much better to temporarily nationalize them than to give them a bailout and then have them go bankrupt again. Through these tumultuous times, just have the government own it, continue, you know, with payroll in various industries, and then... When times get back to normal, then you hand those industries back over. That really is the best way to weather the storm. But you have a bunch of idiots like Mark Levin who, they'll scream Venezuela even when we're not acting like Venezuela. So imagine if we actually started to nationalize certain industries. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mark Levin would be out there with his, you know, his doughboy gut holding a firearm. <laughs> this guy who thinks he's leading the revolution. He'd be out of breath in three and a half minutes. Trying to, you know, storm Washington. Trying to storm uh, Capitol Hill. So this is not... He thinks he's making an argument, but what he's really doing is saying, Well, look at these large numbers. Large numbers are bad. Venezuela. Me. Okay, Mark, that's not... You're not making a point. Yes, the numbers are large. But also, they should be, because our economy is imploding, and the government is our last line of defense. You can criticize the specific way in which that money's spending, but it being spent, but you're not doing that. You're not doing that. You're not saying, okay, let's do this, let's not do this. Let's be specific here and what makes sense and what doesn't. No. To him is ah any bill is banned. Stop it, me. And this is the kind of pressure now that's being put on Trump from these conservative know nothings. Whether it's Ben Shapiro, whether it's Mark Levin, and Trump watches Fox News all the time. And the advice that he's getting from the Fox News people is just stop doing anything. And by the way, he goes on to kind of imply, like, we got we to get back to work. Okay, but how can you make that point when there's a pandemic ripping through the country still? Getting back to work means thousands and thousands more people will die. So, you know, the whole idea of being on lockdown is for public health. If you say we shouldn't do that, then what you're saying is public health really doesn't matter and I don't care about it. So this is, this, is, this is the conservative contribution to the conversation. You know, on the left, I've seen very long, detailed conversations and debate around the nature of a, of a bailout or a stimulus bill. I've seen that stuff. Um, I've seen people saying, we need, to, we need to change the terms. I never see anybody saying, the entire conversation of a rescue package or a stimulus bill shouldn't have it. No stimulus, no bailout to anybody, the people or the industries, and let's just see what happens. <laughs> the degree to which we would turn the country into oblivion if we did that would be unreal. <laughs>